Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Kevin Duty of Duty's Daggers YouTube channel. I recently tuned into Kevin's relatively new channel as I was re-entering a slip joint phase in my collecting. Kevin, too, was clearly firmly in that mode and talking a lot about the Ohio River Jack by C. Reisner Cutlery, a knife I've been, uh, uh, let's just say, ogling for a long time. And it was his reviews that sent me over the edge. His presentation, his taste in knives, and his testing had me hooked. He's a tradesman with a real use for knives in his daily work tasks, which makes his thorough blade testing all the more valuable uh, when laying down your dough, as far as I see it, because I don't use my knives that hard, but I like to know that they can go the distance. We'll talk about that, but first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Of course, download the show to your favorite podcast app. That way you can listen on the go. And if you want to help support the show, you can do so by scanning the QR code that you see on the screen or heading over to Patreon. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Kevin, welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, it's it's my pleasure. Um like I kind of said up front, you you uh, you came onto my radar as an enabler immediately, <laughs> and uh, that's often what I look for in uh, in in my uh, the people I follow for knife reviews. You know, you pick your advice when you pick your advisor. Uh, yeah. t- tell me about. Let's start first uh, with your fascination with slip joints, and then we'll go back in time and find out it's all started. But but like I said, the Ohio River Jack. Uh, tell me about your fascination with slip joints. Well, it wasn't always uh, so. Um, I was never really a slip joint guy ever uh, until, gosh, maybe six months ago. Um, I had been kind of a little burnt out on just the knife community in general, not the people, but just, I don't know, it just seemed like these knife designers and large knife makers were just kind of spitting out design after design, and they're just overwhelming. It's kind of too much, and... um, I just I kind of got burnt out and I was I was kind of looking into other areas of the EDC world. You know, there's a lot of stuff. There's watches and pens and flashlights. And um, and then I stumbled across a, a traditional knife or traditional slip joint knife uh, channel. Um, Richter Knives. Uh, if you haven't uh, checked him out, you should. He's primarily uh, does videos on traditionals. And um, it was a whole new world to me. I had zero idea. Uh, what was going on at all. Uh, you know, I, I had heard the name case before I knew that they were, you know, probably knives that my grandpa would have. And that's pretty much it. Um, but it was a new, uh, it was a new Avenue of the, the knife world that, uh, that I wanted to go down. And it was just the thing that I needed to kind of pull me out of my, my rut and, um, learn something new. Cause you know, I like learning things and uh, I didn't know anything about slip joints. So um, watched a lot of videos, you know, um, I found, um, well, first it was really modern traditionals. The Ohio River Jack was the, the first one, really. And then kind of got into more traditional traditionals uh, after that. So it's a mix of both. Um, so it hasn't been that long. Is there anything about it uh, to you? I mean, I'll, I'll uh, come right out. For me, the slip joint, yeah, you talked about a uh, grandpa knife or a knife your grandpa might have. That is a huge part of... Uh, the initial appeal for me. Um, does that sense of nostalgia play in at all for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. It's, yeah. Nostalgia is a good word. Um, I, I've described it as kind of like, almost like a warm, fuzzy kind of feeling that you get with uh, with patina and like leather and kind of like just things that smell good and start to wear over time. I don't know. It's It has to do with nostalgia, definitely. Yeah. 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 That feeling of something taking on your, taking on your spirit a little bit as you own it, or yeah. I don't know. I got, I got a lot of stuff uh, from my grandfather, knives and stuff. So, well, let's, let's back up. Let's, let's talk about how you, how you got to this in the first place. Why were you collecting knives? Why were you in the knife community watching these videos in the first place? Um, 
Well, it also it started pretty randomly. Uh, for most of my life, I, I think I have the same story as as a lot of you guys. Um, I carried just cheap knives most of my life. You know, I'd go into a big five or Walmart and just pick out something that looked cool. You know, um, spend maybe twenty, thirty bucks, and um, that was fine for me most of my life. And looking back now, I'm sure most of my life, most of my life, I had a pretty dull knife in my pocket because um, I don't. I can't even remember sharpening them. I think I just bought a new one when it got dull. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that was fine. You know, I didn't know there was other possibilities out there. Um, and then one day I was surfing on YouTube and I just stumbled across a video of this guy uh, reverse flicking his PM2, the Spyderco PM2. And as soon as I saw him flick it open like that, I was hooked. I was like, wait, how is he doing that? Because you can't really see behind the knife. It just looks like it just magically popped open. Right. And uh, and that that set me off. And I, you know, saved up and bought a, a, a PM2 after a little while. And, you know, you know the story after that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do know that story. Um, you know, I'd, I, I'd always been into knives. And for me, it was uh, it was knife videos, nothing fancy in 2008 or nine or something like that. And mm -hmm. yeah, something about watching people with their knives uh, can really get you to yeah, especially those close-up shots of them flicking open that really gets you to kind of want to um, do the same thing. But there's something about your videos that I find kind of calming, kind of zen, especially those testing videos. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you are uh, taking us along with you. Uh, we're kind of, I, it seems like we're at your shop on the back of your truck a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about your testing, what you go through and, and why you decided to start doing that. Uh, well, I was pretty much already doing it to some degree just on my own. When I'd get a new knife, I would want to see how it cut, you know. Um, and after a little while, I started to notice that there seemed to be a, a, a lack of uh, testing videos um, in the knife YouTubing world. And I know there are some really good ones, but there seemed to just not be a whole a whole lot. So I kind of wanted to throw my hat in the ring with the, the few guys and gals that do testing. I wanted to kind of join in and, and put my spin on it. The way the way that I do the testing is not super scientific. It's not, you know, we're cutting this many feet of cardboard, this many cuts of the Cecil rope. It's it's more like what's it gonna look like when you get the knife and you just use it day to day? What's it gonna feel like? What's it gonna kind of what's the experience gonna be like? You know, so it's it's a little less scientific, a little bit more. Yeah, just see what the knife is going to feel like. You know, kind of like anecdotal. Uh, yeah. What what uh what what materials do you test on, and how did how did you arrive at those in particular? Uh, well, we start with cardboard, and uh, we cut some leather. Usually, so I'm I'm a welder. I go through a lot of gloves. So my old leather welding gloves, I'll save them and we'll cut them up. Um, I don't know, just watching other cut testing videos, I found that uh, a lot of guys use the Cecil rope stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, it seems to be a good, it's like, it's pretty abrasive. So you don't need to cut a whole crap ton of them uh, to really, you know, see the wear on the edge. You can just cut a, a good amount. You st sometimes you have to cut a lot still if you're talking about 15B or something crazy. But um, that, some rubber tubing, um, just kind of day-to-day stuff that you might encounter. All right. So, Kevin, uh, I, I, I fully admit uh, who I am. I'm a suburban dad with way more knives than tasks to use them for, <laughs> uh, you know, swords and all that stuff, too. Um, and I got to say, I have a lot of like I, I kind of baby them a little bit uh, with with some ex exceptions. Um, I think there's a real value in watching people like you. I, I love uh, Scab from Choir Boys. I love Stasa 23. You know, mm -hmm. lots of great people doing testing and something I think that's really um, invaluable about the kind of testing you do and the, these others is that I might necessarily not necessarily want to take my um, my Jack Wolf knife and use it hard. Yeah. Um, but I like knowing that it can what it can handle. Exactly. Yep. And, I, you know, I, I have knives, too, that I that I baby. I have a couple that I don't use at all. Um, so I, and I've never been the kind of uh, use your shit kind of guy. I, I don't like that um, that saying. I don't like it when people say it. It bothers me. Um, it, they're your knives. You do whatever you want with them. Um, but um, personally, if I, you know, I, I, for example, I recently spent 
a crazy amount of money on a, a Oz machine company Roosevelt. Oh, yeah. And um, this is the most funny, most money I've ever spent on a knife way more. Um, but it's, you know, it's so good. It's just, you, you put it in your hand and you feel that it's just, it just wants to cut things. So I had to, you know, I did a cut test with it and I, I was careful, you know, but I had to, it, I had, I had to cut with it. And yes, I will baby it. I'm not going to treat it the same as some other knives, but you know, but that's just me. You know, some people just want to collect them. They're more on the collector's side and that's completely fine too. Uh, it, it's good. You know, as a collector, it's like, um, um, it's like the materials. It's like the steel. Um, you mentioned 15 V or, you know, many of the steels in my collection to include eight CR 13 MOV. I've never taken all the way, you know, to where I'm like, <laughs> this is so insufficient for my uses, but you still like knowing you're getting what is, what you're told is the best for your money or the most yep. uh, exactly. for your money. Um, and now I'm not going to, I'm not going to pry. We all know that uh, Oz machining company Roosevelt's are hard to come by and expensive, but yeah. What was it that, uh, I mean, you said this is vastly more than you've spent before. What was oh, it yeah. that, that compelled you? A couple of things. It's a legendary knife in, in our community. You know, if you've been in the knife world for at least a little while, you will have heard of it. Um, and it's kind of like that, that thing that you hear so much about and all you want to do is just experience it for yourself after hearing people talk about it for so long. And um, I was actually a little worried about that because I was hoping I didn't have it built up too much in my mind and then be disappointed when I finally got it. Um, so luckily that wasn't the case, uh, but I just decided to save up uh, and it took me a while. Um, you know, I had to not buy some other knives that, when they came up that I wanted, but I said, no, I'm got, I got to, got to save for the Rosie. And, um, I, I, I would do it again. You know, I, I did. So I didn't buy it directly from Oz. Uh, I tried a few times on their drops and it's just, they go so fast. It's so hard. Um, yeah. so I bought it from a fellow YouTuber, um, pocket priorities, um, really good guy was selling one. Um, so I paid a little bit more than I would have from them from Oz and, uh, to me, it was worth it. I probably wouldn't do that again, but it was worth it. Yeah. Uh, it's It sounds like um, uh, like my Sabenza 21 purchase in 2016. Yeah. It was like, this is a knife. It's kind of a moral imperative. Like, I don't, like, I want something flashier and more tactical looking, but I think I need to have this. And yeah. I, I, I got the knife, which was made on leap day that year, which is kind of cool. Oh, uh, that's but. Cool. Uh, it took me a while and then I fell in love. It was like an arranged marriage. Like I'm going to learn to love this knife. And I eventually did. And now it's, you know, I, it, but I wasn't mature enough for it. <laughs> you know, I don't know, but, uh, but that Roosevelt is uh, pretty outstanding. Someone loaned one to me and nice. I didn't use it for anything, but I did inspect and flick and fondle. And that is a, it's a pretty amazing knife. I, I gotta say, I applaud your discipline in saving up. We don't hear too many people talk about saving up at all in our society, but you don't hear much about it in the knife world. Tell, tell me a little bit how you manage your channel. I mean, cause we know that making a knife channel requires some new material moving, moving through. Mm -hmm. But as I recently was also, when you're saving up for something, uh, you see a lot of knives pass you by and you're like, I, I, if I weren't saving for that, I would be all over this and maybe getting more views or whatever that is. Tell me how you manage your channel channel and the, and the knives that come through. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, it was more difficult. Um, at, when I reached maybe uh, two, 3,000 subscribers, I'm at a little over five now. Um, viewers would often send me in knives to take a look at. Um, and it doesn't happen all the time, but I've been very lucky to have some really nice viewers that have sent me sometimes boxes full of knives for me to, to do reviews on uh, for the channel. Um, so really grateful to, uh, to those guys and gals that have sent me knives. Um, uh, I don't get free knives for the, from, you know, my makers or anything. I've gotten a few here and there, but, um, I, I pretty much just buy the knives that I want and then I'll make videos about them. I don't go out and buy a knife because it's going to get me views. Um, or if a bunch of people are asking for it, I, I only buy knives that I want to buy. 
Um, and that's one reason why you won't see a lot of bad reviews on my channel because I'm, I'm, I already know I'm going to like the knife. I buy it. It's for me. And then I just make a video on it as well. So, uh, but you know, it would be harder if uh, I didn't do the cut testing videos too, because that, that gives you kind of two videos out of one knife. You know, you have the sure. review and then the cut test. Um, so that kind of stretches things out a little bit too. Well, for me with you, when I started watching uh, only a few months ago, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that, but uh, uh, you were you were really into the hedgehog, and you were in you had just gotten the hedgehog, the QSP yeah. slip joint, and you're and I was doing Ohio River Jack. Uh, I was saving up for something else and not buying anything, but I really wanted that Ohio River Jack, and uh, and uh, you definitely uh, helped push me over the edge with that. Um, but uh, you, it, it's sort of like um, you. I mean, that, that knife came up a bunch of times and, and no one minds like that's kind of a character at a certain point in a, in a stable, you know, if the knife keeps mm -hmm. coming up. Oh, by the way, it's kind of like the hedgehog or it's kind of like the, the ORJ. So I don't, I kind of, I've started to back away from feeling like I constantly need new knives. Now I also have people who send me boxes, which is very lucky. Yeah. Uh, so I can sometimes, um, I don't know, get away with that. Um, but that discipline again, I applaud, you know. So uh, what did but, you think of what did you think of the Ohio River Jack? Oh my god, dude. River. I I absolutely love it. It's right here. Funny you should ask. Uh I got the single bladed Warncliffe uh, with the, the nat with the yeah. natural canvas. Oh, it's so nice and um I love the the fact that it's full flat ground uh unlike the uh the sheep's foot. I'm not much of a sheep's foot. I, I still need a point cuz I'm yeah. always looking at it like you want to might stick it in something. Yeah. Uh, but I do like this very much, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to the uh, C. Reisner Cutlery um, Lake Champlain Lake Champlain Jack. You have one of those. What do you think of that knife? Man, you know, <laughs> it's really, really badass. It's, it's, uh, you know, you look at this happens a lot for me. You look at the specs online of a knife, but you never really get, you never really realize how big it is until you get it in your hand. And that was the case for these. These are big. These are big knives. Let me hold it up next to the Ohio River Jack just so you can see. Oh my. Oh that they're, oh yeah, that's big. Yeah, they're that's big. A, and that's not a bad thing. That that's no. a I mean, you could easily have this be your primary knife and it'll do everything you could possibly want in a knife. Maybe not like you know, if you're batoning or doing wood, wood crafts, wood craftsman kind of sh stuff, maybe not. But I mean, for my day to day, absolutely, I could get away with, with just that. And uh, it's really good. You know, one thing about, um, you know, QSP makes these for Austin and um, they really have their walk and talk nailed down so well. Uh, just the sounds these things make, they, they're crisp, they're poppy, they're just perfect. I was talking to... Um, Michael Richter, that I, who I referenced earlier, the he has a traditional pocket knives channel. Um, I sent him one of my Ohio River Jacks to take a look at, and um, he said it, it. He thinks it has the best walk and talk of any of his slip joints in his entire collection. Wow, this does. Uh, so that you know, that's all you really need to know about how good the walk and talk is on these days. It's yeah, it's man. Great. That's a that's a feather in the cap, and I got to say, like. Uh, the sounds that you get out of titanium uh in in you know the resonance is is nice how do you maintain your um how do you maintain these knives uh do you spend a lot of time doting over them uh sharpening them unnecessarily anything like that i i get a little out of hand with the stropping um <laughs> i i had bring a strap to me with me to work and Sometimes I'll even strop it like maybe a couple times a day, even. And uh, so I, I go a little overboard with the strop sometimes. But um, aside from that, you know, I just wipe them down. You know, luckily I live in Central California, not a very humid uh, area, so I, I don't have to really deal with a lot of rust problems and uh, you know making sure my knives are uh, protected from that. I, I don't really have to worry about it. Um, so yeah, wipe them down. You know, um, I'm trying to learn how to freehand sharpen right now. I've uh, I've always used uh, like a fixed angle system, like the work sharp, which I've just is really great. I still use it, but I just kind of want to learn how to freehand as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I strop, I, I use the work sharp and that's pretty much it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I just had to. Uh, I just had to make sure because some of us uh, strop unnecessarily, and I've I've actually yeah. recently uh, just uh, c- come to realize like you can make it too sharp. The stuff just skips right off of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, if it's too yeah. polished. Yeah. Um, you mentioned work a couple of times, and um, and uh, as I mentioned, you sometimes get a little view into it a little bit. But how does what kind of welding do you do, and how does that feed into your love of metal and uh, and this hobby? Yeah, it's kind. Of, <laughs> I, I I've had a, an epiphany one day where. I was just doing what I always do. And then I suddenly realized that all these things that I really love in life have to do with metal in some way. I'm a welder. I like to blacksmith. I like knives. Um, I don't know. I just, I like metal. Uh, I kind of stumbled into welding. I uh, had always worked kind of odd jobs and uh, kind of got fed up with that. I wanted to learn a skill. So I eventually went to a welding school um, and uh, just kind of on a whim and turned out I really loved it. Um, I work in a, um, a truck, I work for a trucking business. So, um, I work in their shop, uh, doing a lot of repairs on trucks and trailers and, uh, that kind of thing. But my boss also, uh, owns a ranch. So I'm, I'm out there building fences and gates and, uh, all kinds of farm kind of stuff. And, um, and then on my own time, I also do side jobs. I, um, build handrails and, uh, Oh, all kinds of stuff. Anything having to do with metal, I'll, I'll do it. And, um, you know, naturally you would probably guess that I would want to make knives. And I have attempted a few times. I've made a few pretty decent ones. Um, what's really holding me back is, uh, you know, a, a belt sander. Those things are so expensive. I mean, you could, for a nice one, it's about a thousand bucks. Um, so that's kind of the next barrier of entry for me getting into making knives. But I would like to at some point. Uh, I saw on your Instagram, maybe, or maybe it was uh, a video of you starting your own slip joint. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> tough, man. That's tough. Uh, you know, I had high hopes uh, for myself and uh, I made a part one video where I started. I, I cut out the pieces, you know, the liners, the uh, the back spring, cut out the blades and everything. And um and then on my own time, I was kind of just fiddling with it, just kind of seeing how it all worked. And um, I had another old slip joint that I had taken apart just to kind of see how, you know, it's a lot, it's complicated. I mean, it's it's probably the least complicated of folding knives, but it's still pretty complicated. So I'm still fiddling with it. Once I get it figured out, I'll make a part two and maybe we'll finish it up. <laughs> it's harder that- than I thought it was going to be. I think that's a really, um, when I saw that, I was like, man, like, wow, he just <laughs> launched himself into that. That's, that's pretty damn cool because, uh, a slip joint seems to be like, uh, after the, um, after what's that, uh, what's that kind of, uh, folding knife that doesn't lock open, but you have oh, a, I, uh, tang. a friction folder kind of thing Friction folder. Yeah. Man, sorry. Senior moment. Uh, yeah. like after the friction folder, it seems like the slip joint is a, is a logical progression. Like it is something you can open up and see, but also to me where, where, um, conceptually I lose it with building uh, frame lock folders in my mind. Cause that's the only place I build it is the angle of the lock bar to the blade tang. Yeah. And um, in something like a slip joint, everything's 90, 90 yeah. degrees. Um, I guess the tang can be rounded or if you don't want to backstop, but um, a lot of geometry involved in that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, people make titanium frame locks by hand, so yep. it is possible. Uh, I wouldn't even know how to begin to do that. <laughs> it, it, Man, yeah, I, I don't know. So, so with the welding and with the work you do like day to day, how often do you pull out your knife and use it? And what kind of stuff do you, do you use it for? Um, some days I'll go maybe a whole day without even really pulling it out. Um, but a lot of times I do, um, I'd say the thing I use it most for is, um, making myself cardboard templates. So in, in fabricating, if I, if I need to make a, a a part out of metal, but it's got some weird angles. You know, there's no nineties or 45s. Everything's kind of just wonky. Um, I'll make a cardboard cutout of the piece and make sure that it fits where it needs to go before I actually make it out of metal. Um, so, you know, I'm cutting 
stuff out of cardboard. I actually I use the hedgehog mostly for that because it's it's pretty much like a utility knife. It's so damn thin at the at the tip there that it works really well for that. Do um, you have one handy so people know? Yeah, what you're talking about? yeah, yeah. Right. See if I can get a good shot here. Oh, that's. Let's see. Yeah, it's looks, very, very thin. It looks like a straight razor from that yeah. aspect. That's cool. It's it's a badass knife, man. Um, but yeah, I, I cut a lot of cardboard, uh, rubber tubing, um, and random zip ties, you know, nothing crazy. Oh, I, you know, actually, to be honest, I use a Leatherman more than I use my knife at work. I carry a Leatherman uh, all day, every day, and uh, I use it a lot, a lot, a lot. So you mentioned Central California is where you live. Do you do you? Uh, I'm I'm in the east. I'm I'm near D.C. Okay. and we don't have very. I mean, I, our knife laws have changed considerably over the last mm -hmm. two years, and they've gotten way way better. Uh, but uh, that's only been recently. California, I know, has some conflicting and weird knife laws. Um, do you have? Do you find any issues uh, getting knives there or collecting knives there? There are some uh, knife web knife distributors that will not send me uh automatic knives um mostly the bigger ones uh won't just you put in your address they say oh you're in california uh we can't send it to you uh, but a lot of them will i haven't really had a problem um and it's weird because in california you can't own those things you just can't carry them so it's kind of weird that you can't even order one to your house who knows um but it you know it really doesn't affect me i kind of just I just do whatever, do whatever I want, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. Uh, before Virginia ha was, before we were able to carry automatic knives, it was like it was illegal to even think about them here. Like, don't even <laughs> consider it. So you and couldn't then, own or carry? No, mm -hmm. you couldn't own. Uh, you couldn't even have it in your house. Like, you could wow, not okay. own it or buy it, um, or make it or sell it. And the whole the whole issue came up because someone wanted to start a company making automatic knives in a very depressed start, uh, part of our state, the western part of the state. And uh, and uh, we had a governor who was going through some, um, he got busted in blackface and was trying to backpedal. So all all knife uh, all knife legislation was off the table, you know? And, and, wow. then, uh, and then knife rights came in after the governor changed and, and now we can carry automatic knives concealed. Like, wow, so, that's a big a, jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a full 180. We lucked out. That's but, crazy. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't you know, get it, that. It, it's funny. I uh, I had donated to, to Knife Rights for something or other. I forget what it was, but I sent them a message. I don't know if it was uh, – it probably wasn't Doug that, that sent me a message back, but I just – I said, hey, is there any hope for California? You know, just curious, like, if you guys are working on anything, like, trying to get anything going. And uh, basically the response was – we've tried it's not gonna happen <laughs> oh, man. so you know never give up hope but yeah it's not looking good change comes from within kevin and it's up to you sir <laughs> so i'm i'm sitting here i'm pawing my uh jack wolf knife and uh, and another um leather slip here and uh I, I'm, I'm coming back to your slip joints uh, because you've been making leather slips yeah uh, how, how did this come about and and you seem to be pretty damn good at it <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, I think really just because I started buying more slip joints and um, I don't like to have it just sitting in my pocket because uh, at work, you know, I'm around a bunch of stuff in the air, you know, metal bits and dust and it, it settles in the bottoms of your pockets. And if you have a knife in there, it just gets all gunked up full of stuff. So it helps protect it in the slip. Um, and uh, I, I first I bought a few from some really good uh, leather makers. Um, and then I decided to just try making my own. Um, I had made a few things out of leather in the past, but I really didn't know how to make something that looked good. And um, I just practiced a lot, practiced a lot, a lot, made a bunch of slips. Most of them looked pretty bad, but then they started to look a little better. Um, got a lot of really good tips from, from some friends uh, who also do leather. And uh, I think I'm I'm starting to get the hang of it finally. Yeah. Well, let's let's see a couple. This is my newest design. This is um. I don't I don't know if I'm gonna call it the sway slip or the 
tw- I, I wanted to make a slip for my uh, my sway back uh, Jack Wolf. So I kind of wanted to mimic that kind of sway backy kind of look. Oh yeah. In the slip, how it kind of you know the tip goes up and the handle goes or no. Wait. Yeah, tip yep, goes up, yep. the handle goes down. Oh wait, no. Yeah, it's one of those ways. <laughs> But it fits perfectly because the way the handle kind of shoots up this way, it kind of covers up in this area, and then you can kind of fold this back and and get your fingers in there and get it out. Um, yeah, that's kind of the hard part is coming up with a unique slip design because anyone can make one of these. It's just a classic fold up one. Nothing wrong with it, but I wanted to make something that kind of would stand out and get people interested in wanting a slip from me. So um, that's what hold I think. that. Hold that one up again, please. Uh, I, I want to say uh, something I really like about this because it's something I was complaining about my knife ship free slip, which I also mm-hmm. love. But uh, I love how the stitching on the left uh, comes up uh, three quarters of the way and then it gives you a flap that you can peel back because. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would say that's especially that could also be very valuable if you're using that slip for a number of different knives like this one. Uh, all my GECs go in this one. It just doesn't, okay. you know. Uh, but when I wedged my Ohio River Jack in there, I have to like <laughs> yeah. do this and yeah. shake it out. So I like that idea of having a little a little doorway that you can peel back. Yeah, I try to make out. all of them. I like to make all of them have a little like even this one that's just a regular fold up one. I'll leave the top kind of yeah like half an inch, three quarters of an inch, uh, not stitched, so you can peel this back and and get in there. Oh yeah, just, yeah. It makes it easier. Oh, I'm gonna have to commission yeah. one for my my ORJ, I think, because you. Yeah. I know you've got one of those. Uh, you can oh, yeah. mold it too. I've made more ORJ slips than any other. So, uh, are people buying these from you? Are you uh, surprisingly yes? Them? Surprisingly yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, my I have a little book that I write down. You know, my books. Yeah. Uh, and there's always an, there's always another couple names in there that I'm, I need to make slips for. So, yeah, it's awesome. So, I don't I'm not charging a whole lot um, just because, I you know, I'm a beginner. I don't feel like charging as much as these guys that have been doing it forever. But um, so they're relatively cheap, but they're going to be good. And, yeah. Yeah. And they they won't be cheap forever. So get them while they're hot. It's like exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and it seems like you have a pretty good uh collection that you can use uh but you know you you don't have every knife but then again you don't really need the knife itself for a slip i guess to to it helps it helps to have it um usually what i'll say if i if someone wants to make me to make them a slip and i don't have the knife i'll say you know is it similarly sized to a different knife that i might have you know does is it kind of the same as a hedgehog or whatever or if that's not, if they don't have that, then maybe I'll just get the measurements of the knife. You know, how big is it this way? How big is it lengthwise? How thick is it? And uh, usually I can make a slip that'll fit. Once, I think it's happened once or twice where I sent it to them, it was too tight. In that case, I just make them another one a little bigger. So yeah. not a big deal. So use it for your peanut. Use it for your case peanut. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, So you will accept, I mean, we'll pe- like I would love a maroon leather one. Uh, for instance, you know, uh, if I were to ask for a maroon leather one, is that the kind of thing you do? You go out, you source the maroon leather and kind of. I have been doing it that way. Yes. Um, okay. It's starting to get a, a little bit. I feel like I need to not have so many options for the colors because what's happening is yeah. someone will want a maroon one and then I have to go order it. And then, you know, that's coming and then someone else wants a yellow one i have to make another order for that one so i I think i'm gonna eventually have a selection of leather to choose from maroon will definitely be in there because i really like i like that color but i think there'll be a selection of maybe five different leathers that you can choose from and then um you know whatever color thread you want to go with that so how how are you having people get in touch with you uh to buy these i didn't actually realize you were you were selling them and i'm i'm really happy about that because instagram just instagram instagram yeah all right all right, yeah, and you're, re- you're reasonable. Yeah. So uh, uh, the the leather you just got uh, you just got sucked in because of the the slip joints. What about the other knives you've got? Uh, you mentioned initially it was the PM2 that reeled you back in, mm-hmm. or or showed you a different dimension to yeah. knives. What else uh, <laughs> do you like to collect and use? 
You know, I want to go back to one thing you said earlier that I really liked. You were talking about your Chris Reeve. Was it a, which was it a Sebenza that you have or? Yep. Okay. Yeah. You said that at the time you weren't mature enough for the knife. I think that was, wasn't that what you yeah. said? Yeah. I like that a lot because I felt the same way. Um, I, for the longest time, um, didn't like the look of Chris Reeve knives. I didn't like that they, you couldn't flick them fast. I didn't like that they didn't fall shut. Um, but it took a while for me to mature to the point where I really appreciate something that uh, feels that solid in my hand. And I know that it's going to, it's a tank, you know, it's going to, yeah. it's going to serve me well for years and years and years to come. Um, so my, I mean to say that, uh, my knife tastes have changed a lot over the years. Um, I still, you know, don't get me wrong. I still love a, a nice fidgety knife. Um, but nowadays it's more, if it's fidgety as a byproduct, um, but also a very good cutting tool, then that's great. But if the fidgetiness is kind of prioritized over, you know, the blade, the, anything else really that makes a knife a good cutting tool, then I'm not a, not a huge fan a lot of times. Um, well, ahead. it's like it becomes a toy in a way. And I, yeah. I have some of those and, and every time you get one and it's just a toy, it's kind of like, Oh, you didn't have to do that. But, <laughs> and then I'm like, well, I have a channel. I did have to do that. Exactly. There are some like, things that you just need to suck up and, and uh, show on the channel yeah 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 that's that's how i'm gonna put it but so yeah i i have a i have a bunch of those uh uh but in terms of those kind of fidgety knives the modern locking knives where where do you go i'm lately button locks are are, are getting to me what are the modern trends you're digging you know i love me a good button lock too man i do um and they've gotten so good now uh just with like the yeah. how the detent feels the snappiness man uh I'm sure you remember back when Civivi released their first button lock, it was the Cogent. And before that, it was pretty much the Malibu, the Protec Malibu, or yeah. a few other really expensive ones. But there, there wasn't budget button locks, which is crazy to think about now. Um, but Civivi had their first button lock, and I bought it, and it was amazing. Um, but comparing that to where they are now, I mean, the, the, uh, the Civivi Cubit is one of my favorite knives ever i mean this is a 65 dollar knife it's a button lock um aluminum scales uh just a thumb stud actuating knife with a nice sharpening choil choke up spot super comfortable beautiful blade shape just really amazing amazing knife and it's a button lock and it's it's snappy it's not mushy like they used to be so i love me a yeah, good button. that that knife in particular people are going uh you know, really, really excited about. And that's one that uh, uh, I look at and I'm like, oh, it's a little bit too small for my, for my, you know, mm -hmm. unnecessary knife taste. So I don't <laughs> have to get that, which is always like, I'm always looking for an excuse not to get a knife that people are loving. <laughs> so you are know? you, are you a, a big knife guy in, in general? I am. I, so I prefer uh, like uh, when I started uh, collecting folders, they were all kind of seemed like they were all four inches and then things started to get a little bit smaller and four inches is where I, I came into it because I've always been into, um, you know, not due to my lifestyle, but I've always been into knives as weapons. It's just what's interesting to me um, primarily. And those tend to be a little bit larger. So that's that's kind of where my tastes reside. But, uh, you know, what am I going to do? Turn my back on something that is not three and a half or more. Um, you know, I, 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 I feel like the magic spot is three and a quarter inches uh it's not my magic spot but i think the best designs are right around in there and i think the most attention goes to that that measurement i would agree i would agree with that three and a, yeah three and a quarter totally that's it so why so is that swords i see as well oh sorry yeah no, about swords in a minute. why is that i don't know um I don't know. I think it might be a perfect kind of pocketable size to where it's you have enough blade length to do everything you need to do, but it's also not this honking big thing that takes up pocket space. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, yeah. It it probably is that. I think it's. Uh, I think people open up a folding knife. They see something three and a half inches or more. It seems excessive, and they start thinking weapon. 
Um, I mean, we were yeah. talking, we were talking on this show, uh, on the live show here recently about bad knife names, talk about <laughs> weapons, like the Kaiser assassin and, and, yeah. uh, stuff like that. It, it doesn't make any sense to me, you know? No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you mentioned the swords behind me. Yeah. I was, you know, you like big knives. I was, I was obviously you're into swords as well. So yeah. Yeah. Is it any... uh, an, antique swords or, or modern, you know, battle ready swords that you cut with or, or what's the, uh, the ones on the wall behind me are, are all antiques. Uh, mm -hmm. mo um, many of them are from the Philippines, uh, bring backs from soldiers. And uh, I've done a lot of Filipino martial arts. I love Filipino martial arts and their blades and uh, their whole uh, philosophy. I don't know if it's a philosophy, but many, many, many of their designs have the angle, the blade angled down for accelerated cutting. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so these are mostly antiques, a couple of modern ones behind me that are battle ready but uh nice it, it's basically anything for me it's anything with a blade um yeah. I, I can't i can't help it <laughs> you know? would you do you have more fixed blades and folding knives would you say in your collection uh uh i think it's i think i'm about even probably okay. more folders actually they're a little bit easier uh to justify because i can carry <laughs> yeah. them uh i do have a, a nice uh size sizable amount of fixed blades and lately i've been getting into custom fixed blades because it's handmade knives that i can afford um more or less and i have a lot of guests on the show whose work i want you know you're now yourself included uh with with one of those slips yeah um but so do you have fixed blades it, it seems like uh everyone's got to have at least one i have a few i have a few i have i've kind of held myself back from really going down that road um but i know that i will at some point just like i went down the slip joint road i will go down the fixed blade road at at some point yes um the one that i carry the most though is um, um it's not here it's my bradford guardian three um, Oh yeah that's a good one yeah mostly i mean the knife is excellent i love the sheath though i love how that thing sits horizontally on your belt i carry it just to the left of my belt buckle, right? Kind of uh, by my belly here. And it's just, what's, is that called, what's, is that scout carry? Or what is scout carry? Is that on your back? Scout carry is on your back, but I call okay. that front scout. <laughs> front, okay, yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah, front scout, it's just easy, you know, you just, it's right there, you pull it out, cut and put it away. Um, so yeah, I could easily go down that road. I just haven't quite yet. You know, it, it takes for me, it took a long time before I could wear uh, like carry a fixed blade knife um, regularly or where someone might be able to see it, not where someone can grab it but because it's up front. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm in my state. We're allowed to wear it on our belt where I live. It, it would have people dropping dead of heart. I would be <laughs> yeah. SWAT teamed. You know, it's not acceptable around here but yeah slowly but surely more and more i'm showing a little bit more handle you know if i'm carrying a little fixed blade you know and and it's not concealed and it's a knife and we're allowed to carry them you know yeah. so uh do you with the uh, bradford carrying it up here in front scout is this is this something that everyone can see and if so like how do people react um yes they can see it um because i always have my shirt tucked in so it's not like it's underneath my shirt it's kind of pretty obvious you know I, I haven't really noticed any weird looks or anything maybe i'm not looking hard enough but uh maybe it's because i'm wearing work clothes people think like oh this is a working guy so he, obviously he's gonna have a knife maybe that's it um i mean if i was just in street clothes like at a mall but he has a big knife that would seem kind of weirder maybe I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I guess you just got to read the room. You got to know where you're going and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, yeah. uh, and not, not be too, uh, I, I don't like it when people are too in your face about anything, you know, Yeah, no. Uh, uh, especially not knives, you know, make someone yeah. feel awkward. I wonder where that, that fear comes from. Is it just because it's an object that can, that could hurt you? It could hurt somebody that, that where people are kind of, when they see it, they're, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Kevin, because to me, it's like, uh, I, to me, I, um, it it's the single most compelling object in the world. I, I think to everyone, um, one way or another, I think people recognize that it's in our DNA at this point. I, people are sick of hearing me say this, but I, I believe it's a part of our, um, you know, maybe not genetic makeup, but 
whatever that genetic memory thing is, epigenetics or whatever, it's in us, you know, it's our first tool for, for everything. And, uh, I used to take martial arts, uh, in Philly from, a uh, one of my teachers was a woman. And whenever anyone brought in a new knife, it brought everything to a halt and people gathered around and she used to say men and knives, like, what is it? And, uh, it's a thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're right. It is some kind of primal thing where it's like, yeah, this is my, this is going to, this can, it's going to protect my life. It's going to get me food. It's going to make me shelter. It's, it can do everything that I need it to do that for help me survive. Yeah. yeah. S- self-reliance. Like, yeah, that's, that's like the highest ideal. I think, or it was, it is for me, like you want to know that you can yeah. take care of yourself and then the others around you. Um, I think that's that kind of ties into what you were saying about you might not use, say, 15V to its full potential, but you like to know that it can do that. And that's kind of the same thing of like knowing that the knife that you carry with you is going to be able to handle whatever, even though it may never have to. It's going to, you know, it's going, yeah. to, it's going to handle it. Yeah. And it's one less thing for you to worry about. Yeah. So. In, in your time uh, making videos and uh, posting to Instagram, um, what to you are some of the best and some of the worst kind of trends you've seen? Um, <laughs> what, what do you like? What do you dislike? Well, I already mentioned one, the, the use your shit people. That kind of bothers uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess the, the kind of trend towards, like I was saying, kind of fidgety over function. Um, I, I get it because, you know, there's the whole fidget world of, uh, you know, people buying fidget toys and things that I've never gotten into. Um, it's just not really my thing, but I, I get it. If you're into it, that's fine. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, not a whole lot bothers me to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. I kind of just, uh, do my own thing. <laughs> Front flippers bothered me. Really? And, and and then I and then my my old hands got good at them. I'm like, OK, <laughs> I like them. But but at something you mentioned very early on when when you started looking at slip joints, like um, I like to use the term peak knife. Like, have we reached peak knife? And, and now like um, Civivi makes n versions of the same knife that are kind of undiscernible unless you're yeah. a real <coughs> pardon me, connoisseur. Um, do you feel like we've reached that spot or is something else going to like pull, pull things forward? Do you mean like, has there been a knife made that is the best knife? Is that what you mean? No, I mean like, have we reached the, the peak of this, uh, current knife fury or, or fervor? I would, I know we all know knives aren't going anywhere, but mm-hmm. like, where can they go from here? Have we reached peak knife and from here it's all downhill that's a good question i I think we're getting close if we haven't already i think we're getting close you know people always talk about the the point of diminishing returns with knives where what is the the price tag where you're just paying for the brand of the knife or the person that made it um i'm not really sure where that line is i think somewhere around 350 450 bucks it might be somewhere around there um i don't know where i don't even know where it could go from here i mean yeah if, it, if it's if it's going to be anybody to take it further it's going to be uh brian winters at winter blade co he's going to be the guy to to bring it further that's the guy no doubt and if uh anyone doesn't know um him he's using magnets in such a cool yeah. way in his uh in his knives and he even uh he posted some magnetic dart shooter uh that he made a little while ago that, he yeah. seems, seems to be a bit of a mad genius i tried to get him on the show and uh he's like he's like i'll share dad jokes with you online but i don't really feel like talking i'm like all good open yeah. invitation man that would have been cool to see him talk yeah i don't think he's ever done any kind of podcast and i get it but he, he is he's a very very smart guy and uh yeah, he's a mad scientist. Did you see on a while back on his Instagram, he posted a video of this prototype he had been working on. And it's a side opening automatic that not only opens automatically, it shuts automatically. 
I, I, that I do remember that. Crazy. Wow. <laughs> that, that sounds like a, a new and exciting way for me to nearly cut my fingers off, but yeah, but, but still something. And also the Hawks, uh, Grant and Gavin Hawk, father and father and son team. They're real innovators with their out the front mechanism, uh, yeah. which I've only experienced, you know, at blade show and, and, uh, um, See, I, I have never even gotten to to fire one of those. I would like to, at some point. But can so it, it really feels quite different yeah. than an OTF that you'd okay. It it does, and I only have you know I've only exp, OTF wise I've only really had Microtech and Heretic, and then the Lightning out the fronts, uh, those real cheap Chinese ones. And this it feels like a totally different thing. It feels almost like a gun or something. Uh, maybe I'm. Maybe I'm speaking out of school for the for the people who actually have them, but to me it felt so solid. There was no. Um, it was like it was in this state, and then it's in this state, and there's like no transition or I don't know. Hard yeah. to explain, but yeah, yeah, exquisite. So cool. Have you ever been to Blade Show? Oh, east or west or no? Texas? You know, I've I've been to one small uh, knife show, the the California Custom Knife Show. I went. Uh, nice. Last what was it? Last year? I think it was last year. And that was my first one. Um, and uh, even that was overwhelming. I mean, it was just, a, it was one room with, it was a lot of stands, but I mean, compared to Blade Show, it was nothing. So I can't imagine how overwhelming that would be. I, I will make it at some point, probably next year. So do you ever see yourself uh, as a person who makes things and fixes things? Uh, do you ever see yourself uh, going down the custom um, path and starting to buy from others who are making things you know yes um i like your idea of, of custom fixed blades because that's a that's a really good way to get some custom work where you're not you know draining your bank account i like that um i would love to own a custom from uh brian nadeau obviously oh. sharp by design yeah that's i mean what an ultimate goal uh grail that would be you know one of his uh any of his customs really they're yeah. just unbelievable um a Demco custom. I would love one of, uh, you know, a, a real Demco 8015 or, you know, oh, yeah. 8010, one of those. Um, Ray Laconico. I mean, he makes some really nice custom stuff. So, yes, I would like to, uh, I would like to go down that road. And I'm, I know I will, you know, I'll get there. Yeah. 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 I, I, um, I think when you have something, um, I don't know. You well, you get an attachment. I I do certainly. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of knives from people that I've spoken with, and whoa, that's another great excuse to buy a lot of knives. Well, I had them on the show. I have to buy a knife <laughs> yeah. so I can re you know remember that uh, experience. Um, but yeah, I, there's a certain uh, reward I think with having uh, something handmade that just I don't know. You get you get a bit of that maker in there, and then also a bit of you because you're you know you're helping guide that vision yeah you know uh yeah. kevin i do something here with people who have uh, channels and i i want to i want to i want to run you through this i do a speed round where i i ask yes or no it's not a yes or no question it's a one or the other um and so this is our, our final way to really uh kind of get the cut of your jib see who you are as a knife knife guy all right um and as we go i might pause because i i like to I like to tweak for the guest. Okay. So, uh, okay, first, fixed or folder? Folder. Flipper or thumb stud? Thumb stud. Washer or bearings? Washer. Uh, tip up or tip down? <clears throat> tip up. Tanto or Bowie? Tanto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ooh, controversial. Hollow ground <laughs> or flat ground? Uh, hello. Okay, full size or small? Full size. Okay. Now, uh, <laughs> gentleman's knife or tactical knife? Gentleman's. Yeah, as is evidenced by your brand new Oz, uh, Roosevelt. Uh, yes, that is a gentleman knife. Yes. What what a what a beauty that is. Yeah. Okay, automatic or bally song? Automatic. Benchmade or Spiderco? <laughs> Spiderco. Okay, now this 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 one's for you. Uh, Jack Wolf knives or C Reisner cutlery? <laughs> uh, obviously, C Reisner. Obviously. 
<laughs> uh, okay, Chris Reeve or Hinderer? Oh, that's tough. Um, Hinderer. Uh, well, like you said, you're not quite mature enough for a Chris Reeve. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, milled titanium or spring clip? Milled titanium. Uh, carbon fiber or micarta? Micarta. Finger choil or no choil? Choil. Form or function? Now we're getting meta. <laughs> function. And yeah. you're, you're de- I, I figured you were going to be a function. Um, yeah. I shamefully kind of am a forum guy. Uh, Desert Island knife. One knife for the rest of your life. It doesn't have to be one in your collection. It can be one that you can, you know. One knife. Not going to hold you to it. (laughs) (laughs) This is tough, man. Um, I mean, okay. With... Keeping in mind that it, it has to last a long time, be tough. Um, a Chris Reeve wouldn't be a bad choice. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Demco 8020. Ooh, good answer. That's a good answer. I don't think I've ever had any. Oh, looky yeah, there. Yeah, look That's at that. a beauty. Oh, if you're only listening, uh, full flat ground clip point with the, with the opening hole. Uh, yep. 80, 20. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I, um, ever since I first saw, uh, a Demco 80, 20, I wanted one so bad. And then the 20.5s came out and that kind of, uh, sated my thirst for, for one for a little while. Yeah. And then finally I was able to get the full size one and, uh, it's amazing. It's really good. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I, uh, I was looking for one for a long time and then, uh, a, a viewer of the show let me know that they were standing in front of a cabinet of them at River's Edge Cutlery. And can I get you one? Uh, of course, I had to pay the guy back, but yeah. I was like, yes, please do. And that was my lucky story because that was a uh, very evasive, uh, elusive, I mean. Oh, yeah. Um, so congratulations on that purchase. Yeah. And that was actually on a drop, too. I, I just got lucky, oh. I guess. Yeah. Just just sitting by the computer, hitting refresh. Yeah. Hitting refresh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Kevin, what what uh as we wrap here, what are your goals for the channel? What are you gonna do with your life, Kevin? No, what are your goals for the channel? Like oh, where do you want to see this go? Uh duties daggers. Well, um I want to see it grow, obviously. Um, but it's growing at a good pace. I don't feel like I need to do anything extra to help it grow faster or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I really want to just continue to create a, a good group of people that uh, are viewers that uh, are also friends, um, which is the case for a lot. I met so many uh, just awesome people that I've become friends with uh, through the channel. I just want to continue to grow that, you know, um, keep meeting awesome new uh, fellow knife guys like you and, and a bunch of other people. And uh you know, maybe hopefully someday uh, companies will maybe send me some some knives to check out, you know, loaners from, uh, you know, wouldn't that be cool if like uh, every time Spyderco came out with a new knife, they'd lend you one to have on the yeah. channel? Yes. How, how cool would that be? Uh, yeah, we'll see. You know, I want to grow, but I'm not, uh, I'm not like, uh, that's not my only focus, I guess is what I'm saying. Cool. I like that slow and steady because uh, it's easy to burn out on things, especially uh i don't know especially when when you might uh, go through a rough spot you're like wow uh, i've been i've been really obsessing over knives i have something like important going on over here you know i yeah. i i you know, it can get like that but at, at the same time and i'm sure this might be the case for you uh it's also a redoubt you know it's a place it's a place to uh, escape to for a little while if you just oh, yeah. want to you know get mechanical about it Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Kevin Duty, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. I appreciate it. Uh, I hope you'll stick around uh, 10 minutes extra for uh, patrons, patron members. I do a little extra interview for, uh, um, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. It's been really cool meeting you. This was really, really fun, man. You are a very good interviewer. Very fun to talk to. 
Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Right back at you. All right. Take care, sir. Yes, sir. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Duty of Duty's Daggers on Instagram and YouTube. Definitely check out those YouTube videos. They're so good. Uh, it's kind of nice to just hang out with him in his videos. You know, there are uh, various people you go to for different things. Uh, Kevin, uh, I definitely like watching his channel just because I like hanging out and watching him uh, do his thing and uh, give his uh, his thoughts on the knives. Uh, be sure to join us next week for another conversation, another great knife conversation. And then uh, don't forget Wednesday for the Midweek Supplemental and Thursday for Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.